Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Movies That Move We. Um, today, we're going to be discussing On the Come Up, which is the film adaptation of the book by the same name, which was written by Angie Thomas. If that name sounds familiar to you, we reviewed another film adaptation of one of her books, The Hate You Give, several months ago. Go check that one out. Um, the story is set in Garden Heights, the same place The Hate You Give happened, and it's about a 16-year-old aspiring rapper named Bree. Um, Bree is, she comes from a single-parent household. Uh, her and her family, they live in what some people would call a marginalized community, Black neighborhood. Um, and she's like any other kid. She wants to be a rapper. She has some really close friends that she hangs out with and talks to. She gets teased. You know, all typical stuff. Now, her father was well known in the community. He went by the, the tag name uh, Lawless. And he was a battle rapper, underground rapper um, in the community that everybody looked up to. And, and they kind of held him up. There was a whole mural. In, in the neighborhood with her father on it. Um, the film itself focuses on three key, three key things. Um, finding your voice, the importance of family and community, and it also touches on systemic injustice. But let's start at the beginning. The relationship between Brianna and Jay. Jay is played by Sanaa Lathan, and Brianna is played by newcomer Jamila C. Gray. I'm still getting used to these names here. Um, and just a side note, Sanaa Lathan um, directed this movie. This is her directorial debut. And so here we have it. Uh, Jay is starting her life over. She'd been in and out of jail throughout her, her daughter and her daughter's brother's childhood. And now at 16 years old, she's back in her daughter's life. And at times you almost feel like the kids are the parents and Jay is the child. And it's not anything that's said, but it's in the way they care for each other. Um, both Brianna and her brother are trying to do things to earn a little extra money to help their mom out. Their mom recently lost her job at the church. She didn't do anything wrong. They just didn't have any more money to pay staff. And so she was one who was let go. And so she's back out on the street looking for another job. The thing that always messes her up, though, is her criminal background since she's been incarcerated. So... That's something that kind of weighs on 16-year-old Brianna's mind. Um, Brianna gets a chance to get a record deal. And the person who offers her that record deal is uh, Supreme, who's played by Method Man. <clears throat> anyway, um, he offers to fly her and her friends out to Georgia to go ahead and record a single. Now, Brianna's Aunt Pooh, who's played by Divine, Divine Joy Randolph. And if that name doesn't ring a bell, her face definitely will. She was in All Murderers in the Building. She played an officer in that, in that uh, series. But anyway, Aunt Pooh advised Brianna, don't mess with him, leave him alone. There's no good news there. Even though he has someone from the community that has an album out and it's actually getting some play, don't trust that. Stick to the plan, slow and steady wins the race. Okay, now um, who has some stuff with her? She's still involved in the gang life. She's still selling drugs in the community. I'll, I'll circle back to that because some of you just went, she's selling drugs. What the heck? We'll cover it. Relax. So anyway, um, <clears throat> Brianna's doing whatever she can to make money. And 
you know, coming under Supreme's wing is like, I can pay the bills. The lights are out in my house. We hardly have any food to eat. I can actually do something to help my mom. I know I have the talent to do it. I can do it. And so, like I said, Supreme flies them out to Georgia, introduces her to a producer. She gets in the booth and she wraps her own stuff. And the producer is like, this is bubblegum wrap. This, this isn't what the kids want to buy. And not just any kids. This is not what the white kids who like to listen to rap music are going to buy. You have to come with something hard and heavy, sitting, heavy hitting. Give them the stuff that they're used to listening to that makes the community seem like it's a rough place. It's a hard scrabble place and that's where you're from. She delivered. Now the problem was she, she may have dropped a few gang names and by the time she got back home the song was a hit all of the kids were were singing the song when they saw her on the street they were repeating lines it went viral on social media and she wasn't expecting it she wasn't ready for that but she was also bothered because she had to be somebody else in order to get that while they were in Georgia, Supreme brought her an outfit. And this, to me, was kind of some heavy symbolism. Peel off the skin you're usually in. Put, put on this. Now, Brianna is a, a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl. She's comfortable, okay? And he had her, it was a gorgeous dress. Looked nice on her. But it was short. It was form fitting. It wasn't her. And so when she got back home and she's back in her neighborhood, she's just trying to be Brie, the Brie that everybody knows. Problem is she didn't count on her words having the impact that they had. And so while her and her best friend Malik are walking down the street and again, being typical 16 year olds, Two members of the gang that she mentioned in her song roll up on her and him. They hold a gun to her head, they steal her chain, and they beat the brakes off of her friend. Just to say, keep your name. Keep my name out your mouth, basically. Um, and this gets back to her former manager, Aunt Pooh. Remember, I said Aunt Pooh is still in the gang life. So she decided to go straighten it out, even though Bree said, Aunt Pooh, leave it alone. Leave it alone. While all of this is happening, Bree goes back to school. She was suspended from school for selling contraband. No, she wasn't selling drugs. Regardless of what her mom did, regardless of what her Aunt Pooh was into, she wasn't selling drugs. She was selling candy to make pocket money. And because they were going to a school outside of their community, school security was a little bit harder on the black kids than they were on the white kids. Candy was no. Anything that required money exchanging, money for goods, that was illegal in that environment. As a result, Brianna was thrown to the ground by school security, two grown men, and treated like a criminal, like she really did something horrible. And because the school had a zero tolerance policy, yes, she was suspended. Again, by the time she came back and was going back to school, all the kids had heard this song and they were chanting it and they were chanting, free Brianna, free Brianna, she couldn't go back to school. Her words had great impact. I won't tell you the rest of what happened, but her words had great impact. <clears throat> she figured out she really needed to be just Brie. Just Brie. But it was going to be a challenge to get back to that. Um, what you also see in the movie is um, 
family and community rallying. Like I said, people that weren't necessarily her best friends came together and protested the way she was treated prior to her suspension. And they were chanting, free Brie, free Brie. It ended up going to the school board and there were people there to support her. Of course, her most vocal supporter from the time the incident happened to the time that it got to the school board was her mother, okay? Um, her best friends supported her all the way through. Remember I said her friends got to go to Georgia with her. They believed in her and they were there every step of the way for her. Um, and even her aunt Pooh, as uh, unconventional as her approach was, she wanted the best for Brie and was willing to guide her through it again. Her way was slow and steady wins the race. Don't rush the process. Take your time. You have the talent. You have the ability. You can do this. Um, and again, the systemic in injustice. Now, I told you about Brie's issue with the school. That's one form of the system, as, as you will hear people refer to it. But then again, you look at what her mother went through. Her mother didn't murder anybody. You know, again, her mom was in, involved in selling drugs and prostitution. Yep, both illegal. But it shouldn't turn into a life sentence once you're released if you have been rehabilitated, which is the point of jail and prison, right? Rehab rehabilitate people, get them to act better. She's out, she's acting better. Opportunity escapes her. She's struggling to find a job and to make ends meet. And of course, if she can't make ends meet and the state finds out about it, she could lose her kids again. Okay. And then you have, um, on the other side, Aunt Pooh. Aunt Pooh's been in and out of jail. And honestly, Brianna's her meal ticket. If she can make Brianna successful, she goes with her. Aunt, Aunt Pooh doesn't want to be in this space. She wants better for herself, too. But... A little bit of a lack of self-control because when Brianna said, hey, leave it alone, let them have the chain, Aunt Pooh said, oh no, we're going to straighten this out. And stuff transpired. I'll let you watch the movie if you haven't seen it or read the book to find out what happened. But what happened to Aunt Pooh, Aunt Pooh was the final straw for Brianna. She was like, I don't need it. I don't want it. I'm going to stay in the neighborhood and, and do what I've done. Be a battle rapper. I have to get my voice back. And so I know it's going to sound like I'm giving away the ending. Not really. I'm not. So uh, by the end of the film, Brianna's back in the ring where she got started battle rapping. And she's battle rapping with one of Supreme's really high level, I mean, he, he's, if not national, he's at least a regionally known rapper. She gets in the ring and goes toe to toe with him and wins. She got her voice back. Now, that is a type of happy ending. The thing that needed to be resolved was her finding her voice. But it doesn't mean all of the other things fell into place. Her mom was still unemployed. Her aunt was still dealing with the consequences of not listening to Brie. And Brie still had to deal with whatever came out of the school board meeting as far as her selling candy. That still had to be dealt with. The officers had to be dealt with. And so I think that's the thing I appreciated about this film, that it didn't turn it into this and happily ever after type of thing. It was, it was written like real life happened, even though this is a work of fiction. So, that being said, I'm going to give this movie a five out of five stars. I think it had great flow. It was a great story. 
Um, and there was a, a message, you know, if you have your teenager watching this film, they'll get it. And it's not beating you over the head with uh, the social injustice or any of that stuff. It's part of the story, but it's not the prominent part. You get to know who the main character, Brianna, is and how all of the things in her environment impact her life. So I'm going to leave you with a couple of questions. And yes, I have them written down, so I won't be looking directly at you for a second here. So how do you think On the Come Up explored the relationship between art and activism? I think I may have touched on it, but I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. Um, what message does the film convey about the impact of poverty on young people and their families? And how does the film challenge, this is an important one, how does the film challenge stereotypes about Black women in the music industry? What does the film say about the importance of family and community in, in achieving success? And how does this film address the issues of race and discrimination in the education system? So... Ponder those questions. Drop your responses below in the comments section and let's talk about it, shall we? Anyway, that is the show for today. I hope you will join me next week. I think you'll like what we have next week. We're continuing our Women's History Month uh, theme. And so, again, we're focusing on women-centered stories or Black films that were directed, produced, blah, 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 by Black women. And so I think next week's will be pretty interesting. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I am prone to changing my mind from time to time, but I'm sticking with this one. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. Join me again next week. And don't forget, like, subscribe, share the page. If you like the content here, tell your wife, tell your kids. Bring them on over. Let's all talk together. Bring snacks because, you know. But anyway, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook at movies, dot mo movies That Movie. Excuse me. I don't know why I keep putting the dot in there. Movies That Movie over on Facebook. Follow our YouTube page. It's under Media That Moves We. And the playlist is called Movies That Move We. Go back. Watch some of the other things. We've been at this since, oh gosh, late 2020, early 2021. We've been at it for a minute. So go back and watch some of the past um, episodes and join us next week. Okay? All right. Good to see you. Until next time. Bye.